Hello and welcome to Warblog. Today we're looking at the First South Ossetian War. Um, we've already got an Ossetian War, but it's a Georgian part of George, the Georgian conflict which is associated with this. But this is um, 1991. Essentially, Georgia, which is also up here, um, essentially came independent from Russia, uh, but at the same time, South Ossetia also wanted their own independence, um, which they sort of claimed. Um, a bit rusty on the exact details, but the uh, Georgians sort of weren't so keen on that, and so on the 5th of January 91, they, um, they basically um, invaded. However, the thing is, South Ossetia really didn't have much of an army. I mean, when you read the Wikipedia, it says that um, in '91 they only had three or four hundred poorly armed fighters. Um, they gradually grew their um, force up to fifteen hundred full-time fighters plus three and a half thousand volunteers. Um, plus, there's some sort of North Ossetian militias. Um, so. It's an interesting game from the point of view, it's similar to one of the other games, which I can't quite remember. Uh, let me just see whether I can see it on my YouTube channel, because without it starting to play, I'm making a silly noise. I hate autoplay. I stopped it. Yeah, um, it's the Guinea-Bissau War of Independence. Um, I mean, there's some others as well, but there's not enough units to cover all the objectives. And so now this this sort of game starts on 5th of January and it goes all the way through to does that every day, all the way through to 24th of June 1992. Um, and essentially, the, Ru the Russians do help. In February '92, but it's not a long way off. Um, so there they are, sort of helping. Now it's sort of an interesting game in the sense that I'm giving two weeks per turn, so it means it's very sort of very strategic uh, in the sense that there's probably a lot more happening. Um, so you'd be sort of saying, you know, well, there's probably conflict going on all the time. So what you're probably applying for is major strategic movements as opposed to small ones. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I mean, you get sort of, you know, that to play the whole war through. Uh, it, there's a lot of lulls. I mean, you're probably better off just reading the Wikipedia, but um, essentially most of the conflict took place in March and April. So in the first part, um, there were three major assaults against the capital, um, Tishibi, whatever it is, um, Tishin, Tishinvali, Tishinvali. Um, but there's quite a few sort of ceasefires broken, brokered, which were broken, um, and pretty much the war sort of came to an end after basically um, Gams Sakhurdia was ousted. He was the leader of the Georgian sort of state um, in March 1992, and when and then later on they got war, they became involved with another breakaway state, Abkhazia. Um, and so they basically brokered a ceasefire, which left South Ossetia um, in split control between Georgia and um, and South Ossetia. And essentially, the map that I based this on, I might, I might show it. It's, it shows all these places. So the Georgian player pretty much had. Uh, I don't have my map with me, uh, but it sort of had a lot of these sorts of places, and it sort of took a lot of all this sort of stuff. And you know, there wasn't much left that was South Ossetian, and so you know, the game is really sort of to see how many of these you can take. Like I said, there's probably not enough units to really sort of to do all of this sort of stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see actually how it works. Um, a in particular, you've got the sort of benchmark of when the Russians come on. Will there actually be anything of the South Ossetians left when that happens? Um, or will one side have 
completely lost. What I'm hoping for, it will prove to be a bit of a stalemate, but you'll also have to role play in the sort of the lethargy that both sides had. I mean, you know, the South Ossetians were poorly equipped. The Georgians, they were supposed to have a, um, a sort of a, a, a 12,000 man strong force um, raised by conscription, but they didn't have the money. And so it's just formed from volunteers. So they didn't really have much of an army either. Um, and they were using a lot of these volunteers, these militia units, and uh, in particular the uh, the White George, um, who are there. They were, it said, that they were rumoured to be common criminals who were granted amnesty in order to fight in South Ossieta. Um, and they basically, the, the, the militia, the the um, the, the National Guard didn't really want to fight, and when they pushed later on, I think in the late, latter part of the war, not a lot, not not all of the, the, the um, National Guard actually did what they were told because they didn't want to, and so you know only a small amount of the Georgian units advanced where they were told, and they were beaten back by the South Ossetians. Um, so it's it's a sort of it's a war with both sides being fairly fairly sort of weak. And um, so, from that point of view, it should, should be interesting as well. Just it's just an interesting part of history as well. Um, to be honest, I don't know why I'm to South Ossetia in the end. It sort of says it was split. Um, about a thousand people died throughout the war. Um, I haven't put any refugees in, but about one hundred thousand uh, ethnic Ossetians fled from South Ossetia and Georgia proper, mainly into North Ossetia, part of Russia. Um, a further 23,000 ethnic Georgians fled from South Ossetia and settled into other Georgian areas. So there's a lot of that going on, but I haven't done that um, just because I haven't really thought about it until about now, really. But um, there doesn't seem to be a major sort of part of it, although, to be quite honest, I think it was um, in this sort of area, a lot of that ethnic stuff going on. But anyway, so the first thing to do, really, I mean, I sort of love to really start playing it in earnest. Um, but obviously there's this battle group here, which will sort of come down here. Um, then there's this battle group here, which will come through here. Um, then there's obviously this battle group here, which will sort of come through here. I mean, it doesn't really need explaining. And there's this battle group here, which will be the sort of um, the Tishin Duvali. How do you say that? I don't remember how to say these things. Um, How do you say it? The Tishin Vali. I almost said it right. The Tishin Vali thing here. So that's why there's a big stack of units there. And obviously this battle group here. So really, it was, I think a lot of it will come down to the sort of the momentum that we can gather. I mean, there's not a lot there to stop these units from coming through. Um, so I'm not sure whether it's going to be balanced. So after this playthrough, I might sort of revise the unit numbers. So let's start off with, say, a nice easy one, and there's this lot up here. So what we've got, um, well, we've got these, these these guys. Well, they're going to go in here, and a lot of it was came down to sort of what they can get from these places. So these these sort of militia units are more sort of probably quite content to just wander around doing their thing. Um... Let's see what we can get. This will give us a, a, a bit of a... Oh, that was stupid. Hmm. Okay, well they messed up their their initial thing, but that doesn't matter too much. So, they're probably not going to be able to move much further. Not at all. So, we won't move anything through these wooded hills. We should get some good numbers. So what have we got? Three, six... Eight. Three to one. So those are sort of those sort of odds we're going to be getting, especially against these sorts of units. Um, but they don't have enough to go through these wooded hills. 
very slow moving. So similarly, we're going to be really up against it here, so much so that we'll probably need to call in the support of these militia units. So that was a one to one. Okay. And here. Now here we've got some artillery we can use in first, and we've got some of these militia units. Although, to be quite honest, I think I might, what I might be happier doing in the militia units is trying to take out this stack here. Well, I think I'm going to bring them in and support there. So let's fire some artillery in here first. No effect. So that should be about 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. one to one and the exchange now I'm sort of happy with the one to ones um, especially in this sort of thing so I think it's sort of balancing out in the sort of conflict wise I mean what I'm saying there I was a bit concerned that there would just be this sort of massive surge you know we just destroy these units and there'd be nothing left but those battles have you know sort of given me the sort of I, I, th I think in, in indicating it's going to be quite a slow game, which is what it should be, I think. Um, but here, let's let's move in there so we can get the ten percent. Let's try and take this out. We've got a massive group here, so let's. In fact, I should have put some of these elsewhere. I thought I, had, I didn't realise I had left so much here. Okay, well, we've got some artillery damage in there. What was that? One. So we've actually done some damage. And hopefully, it should be a bit more than the one to one here. It's all going through the wood, wooded hills, which makes it difficult. Four to one and a DR. So that's the main battle group. But they are going to be coming up against this larger stack here. And I don't think we're going to be able to do any movement, or can we? Yes, because we're going through a road. And they're going to have some movement. Now, it's that old leaving the artillery behind trick. So, so I'm going to leave that all there. And whilst I'm here, because I've got some movement, I think I'm going to attack into there. I think I can safely push him away. Six to one and a DR. Okay. So that's the first turn. Okay, end turn. Well, we now know where the forces are coming from, and so we can start to react. invading Georgia and we could we'll go around here right this is interesting irregulars versus irregulars so let's just see what the odds how that's going to work out Ah, oh, one to ones. 